This is the ruthless review of the Festool Capex. I'm gonna give it to you straight. What I like, what I don't like. We'll go over the features, everything you need to know about this saw before you decide to buy it or hate on it. Let's go. First up, I've never been sponsored by Festool. I've also never been given a tool by Festool. I bought this with my own money over a year ago in late June, July of 2022. Before we get to what I don't like and what I like, we'll go over the features of the saw just so you know what you're getting. It is a miter saw, so it does what miter saws do. It goes to cut miters. So 60 degrees to the right, 50 degrees to the left. I rarely have to go over 60 degrees, but there are tricks you can use to go past that if you need to. On the miter, there are positive stops at zero, 15, 22 and a half, 30, 45. This is a 10 inch miter saw, so you get a 10 inch blade on there. You can also cut bevels with this saw, 47 degrees to the left, 47 degrees to the right. This is also a sliding miter saw, so you can get some extra capacity on the cut if you so need to. Anywhere along the sliding mechanism here, you can also tighten this little thumb screw down, which will stop it in place, either all the way collapsed all the way out or anywhere in between. There's also a depth stop that you can set right here and it's a fine tune. You twist this little knob, that fine tunes the depth that you're gonna stop at. I really like this feature because you can really dial in the depth of your cut if you wanna do it like half laps or dados or anything like that. It also has a lock button right there to lock it in place for transport. This is a variable speed miter saw. It has a variable speed dial right on top. This is useful in a variety of situations. I typically leave it full blast for most things, but you can turn it down if you need to for various cuts. There's also a button right there that activates the laser line, which I really like. That laser line will put a line on each side of the blade curve. That's handy, 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 so you know which side of the blade you're cutting on at any one point. If you don't have it mounted in the miter station, these little extension wings will extend out with the simple twist of this knob, and then you can lock it back down. Just depends on how much space you have, if you're working in a station or on a work site. If you do transport this, this is very lightweight compared to a lot of other miter saws and it has cord storage here on the back so you can store those out of the way. It's really easy to transport. Not only is this a sliding miter saw, it has a very cool feature that I really like a lot because it is such a small saw and it has such a compact design in the 10 inch blade. It does have a feature where it basically it's like an extra capacity kind of thing. You flip that little thing down, because of the way it locks in this specific position, when you drop the blade, it cuts a lot deeper and further back. So you kind of get almost a 12 inch blade cut capacity with the 10 inch blade. It also comes with this nice PKE meter so you can detect ghosts. Now, this is a really cool angle finder that you can literally use to go find any angle. So if you're cutting like crown molding or shoe molding or anything like that, base molding, whatever you guys call it, <laughs> you can literally find that angle, bring it back to the saw. The center line helps you line up with the laser and then with the angle that you've already fixed so that you can just literally set your saw to it and go. Plus it's really easy not to lose this because there is a storage place for it on the saw. There's also kind of a quick blade change, but it can also be used as a safety device. If you have this in a shop with kids or something, this will deactivate the trigger if you flip this around. Of course, if they know what they're doing, they can flip it back. But this locks this in place so that you can change the blade. Now, before we get to what I don't like about this saw, let's talk about what I really do like. I like the fact that it has a soft start. A lot of other miter saws that I've used in the past just kind of jerk to life, and I don't like that. I like this soft start a lot. I like it a lot. This is by far the best bevel mechanism I've found on a miter saw that I've personally used. I like the fact that I can just flip that little switch in the back and then I can really just turn this handle and it dials it right in. Perfect, a half degree, a quarter degree, whatever I need. I can literally dial that in anywhere I want and then lock that back down and it's not gonna move. I love that. You can also fast move it if you want and it has a positive stop at zero and 45. A lot of people think that because of this handle design, it's kind of weird and awkward but I think that it's for a purpose. One, you get used to it really quickly and you think nothing else about it. So if you're worried about, well, I don't know if I like the handle, it's not gonna bother you after a day or two of use, you'll not think anything of it. What I think it's beneficial is you're pushing in a straight down motion where a lot of other miter saws you're grabbing to the side of the blade and you can cause some deflection if you're pushing too hard. And this basically you're pushing directly in line with that blade. I think that makes a really clean, accurate cut and I think that really does help. 
I like the sliding mechanism on here that it's forward so I can mount this close to the wall here as you see and it slides really smoothly. I've never put anything on here and I've cut hundreds of cuts with this thing. It gets dusty, there's dust in the little thing right there up in that hole, but it never grinds or anything. It always slides smooth. I do like the laser. I'm red, green colorblind, so I only see that laser on certain woods for whatever reason. Uh, but if you're not red, green colorblind, you don't have anything to worry about. I do like that it's on both sides of the blade. That gives me a good clear indication of where it's at if I'm cutting the right wood. Like darker woods, I can see it. I love the depth stop on this and the fine tuning that you get with that is awesome. I've never had a saw where it had that level of fine tuning. You can literally just, I don't know how much you can see that, but I can twist and it'll just barely move as much as I want it. Or I can twist faster and make it go faster until I get to the perfect depth. This thing is awesome. This is the only miter saw clamp that I've ever actually used because it works. Most of them are just weird. They don't work, they're awkward. You have to twist down, twist that thing and it never works. This just flips around, you slide it in place, clamps. It just clamps. That's what it's supposed to do and it works. It's awesome. The only problem with this clamp is it does get in the way of the miter, depending on which way you're going. Sometimes I have to move this to the other side. I wish it was a better place to store that. I also like how easy these fences are to adjust. You literally flip the little switch, move them, flip them back down. I mean, it's super easy. Even though I don't move this, I do appreciate how easy it is to move around because it is lightweight. I also like that it integrates with the Festool dust collection. That's one of the main things I love about Festool tools is that they all work together in a system. This is them. And that's one of the things that a lot of people miss when they look at Festool and the prices which we'll get to in a minute. Another thing I like about the Festool Capex is plenty of power to cut through anything that I want. I've cut through any number of hardwoods, purple heart, maple, walnut, et cetera. It just works really good. And another thing I like about Festool in general is their warranty. This has a three year all encompassing warranty. I don't know how they word it, but basically includes wear and tear. So if you just wear this thing out in the first three years, they'll fix it. And they have like a 10 year uh, parts replacement guarantee. So they guarantee that even after they stop making a tool, you'll have parts for 10 years. If they don't, you'll get the new version. So I like the fact that their warranty is pretty good. This is where we're gonna get ruthless, all right? There's two things that I think is wrong. I don't like, I guess it's, it's not necessarily wrong, it's just I don't like it. I don't like how much this saw costs. At $1,600, I think it's ridiculous it costs this much. I don't see anything about this saw that says, okay, yeah, it costs X amount of dollars to make it, so they're gonna mark it up a little bit and make a little profit. I think they're overcharging for it. I think that's just because they can, just between me and you in the, in the signpost there. I think that everybody knows that you're getting upcharged because it's a festival. At $1,600, yeah, I'm a little mad about it, but I paid for it. Do I regret it though? No, I don't. I don't regret buying it. I just wish it was lower cost. I think if it was around 1,200, or even $1,000, I think it would kind of be an easier pill to swallow, but it's $1,600. Like it, you just leave so many people out uh, just because of sheer budget. And it's a 10 inch saw. It's a fantastic saw, but $1,600 is a lot of money for something like this. You can buy a very nice, very capable table saw and a miter saw together for that, that amount of money. I just think that, man, I wish it was a lot lower. The second thing I don't like about this saw is how much everybody raved about the dust collection being absolutely amazing, and it's not, it's just okay. Is it better than the other miter saws that I've tested? Yeah, better than the Delta uh, Cruiser that blows dust back in your face. Better than my DeWalt, the DWS-S779, and better than the Makita that I had, although when the Makita was collapsed, it was really good at dust collection, but when you slid the saw, that's when you saw a lot of dust kicking up. But this one remains kind of consistent, whether you're sliding or have it uh, collapse to the back, it collects the dust equally as well, although it's not perfect. I do have it paired with the Festool CT36 dust extractor with the bigger Festool hose, and it's still not amazing. It's just okay, better than the rest, but not as amazing as everybody wants you to believe that this Festool is gonna suck up all the dust and you'll not have any in your shop. It's not true. You're gonna have dust, it's just woodwork. Although I love this clamp, I wish that it wasn't in the way all the time. It depends on which way you're cutting, you're always gonna be moving it left or right. Of course, I could throw it in a drawer or something. I like it being on the saw so I can keep up with it, but it's just in the way a lot of time. This is one of those kind of, maybe I don't like it, maybe you might, I don't know, you tell me. I don't like how wide the factory throat plate is on the Capex. Yeah, you can adjust it a little bit. I went with the cauliflower brand, although I will say when I ordered it, it took like a month. I never heard nothing back. I emailed, they're like, oh yeah, we're sending them out. We were back ordered. Then like several weeks go by and then finally I was able to get it. So it took like 
probably a couple of months from the time I ordered it. I know you can buy them on other places. I ordered them direct, but this is a cauliflower insert. I like it because it's that HDPE plastic, whatever you call that. And it just, you can interchange that. It comes with five different ones. So if you wind up cutting a bevel and cutting into it, you can change it out. It's very easy to change out and it fits really flush. I do like that about it. So that's why I went with the cauliflower brand. I think you can get them on Amazon too. I'll link to them in the description if they're on Amazon. Another thing I don't like for being ruthless is the fact that I just wish I could get other blades. I really particularly like CMT brand blades. I would love to be able to run one of those on there, but I can't. That's one of those things when you brine to that system we talked about. This is them. We doomed. There's pros to that system and then there's cons to that system as in you have to buy their blades. Now, as far as my setup goes, if you're in the field, Again, this is lightweight, it transports, but I'm in a shop setting, so I wanted it mounted on a miter station. I built this miter station myself. I have plans available for it, I'll link to it in the description. It does have a folding wing because I needed a compact, because the saw is compact, I wanted a compact design. It's only six foot long, but I do have a wing that will extend out another three foot for longer stock that I need to break down. So I like the fact that I can do that. And I can house a CT36 dust extractor under here without any issues, plenty of room for that. And the way I've got that piped in is I've literally piped it through to this side where I have an extra hose that has a vacuum attachment on it. So I've got a, a splitter that's from Festool with blast gates, you can turn them on and off. So I always keep the extra hose off while I'm using the saw. And then I can turn the saw suction off and the hose suction on to vacuum up the floor and anywhere around there is how it stays so clean here. I literally clean up after every project. On the hose that I use to clean up with, I do have that Bluetooth button on there, which is absolutely awesome. That lets me activate this even if the saw is not activated. And because I have the saw plugged directly into this, it will activate when the saw turns on. I do like that. One thing I have noticed though, is you have to squeeze the trigger on the saw, let it spin up and the suction start for three, four, five seconds before you start making the cut. That helps dust collection a lot. One thing I do like about this dust collection system is it collects in bags and it has a HEPA filter. So it really does cut down on the fine dust in the shop when this is collecting it. And for stop blocks, I've integrated the Stealth Stop from Woodpeckers. This is fantastic. I love this stop block system. I tried a cheaper, uh, T-Track type stop and I just scrapped it pretty quickly and went and just went ahead and bit the bullet. It's only like 250 ish dollars for this setup. Now you can set it up with fences uh, on vertically, but I wanted the flat surface. I don't like the vertical fence. So I was able to do that and keep a really nice low profile design. And these are extremely accurate with that dial. You can really dial in your cuts. This is a really good system. And to kind of complete my storage setup, this is an OmniWall setup. This is a Weekend Warrior XL package. I work with them on my other channel with this. This is a fantastic system. It's kind of like a pegboard, but better because nothing moves. It basically locks in place. So when you pick tools up and off of there, your, your pegs don't fall out because of the way they lock in. Plus it has a lot of accessories for storage and organization that I really, really like. So if you like what you saw in this saw and you want to buy one for yourself, I'll put a link in the description and a pinned comment so you can find it easier. I think you'll like it. If you like this ruthless review, you'll like the one I did on Milwaukee's router right there.